bow and arrows are fun in VR, so let's learn how to make one. For this tutorial, I'm actually gonna have two different download files if you'd like. I have one where you can download the full project and be able to go from there. And I also have one with just the models and prefabs that I'm gonna be using if you want to use your own project. With that, let's get started. Opening up the project and going to the fistful of shrimp scene, we will be greeted with this. This is just my simple table here, a floor. You can see the XR origin is right here. And we have a bow prefab that I've made. And you can find this in the script in the project that's called bow and arrow. You'll see we have materials, models, and prefab. If you come in here, you'll see we have a few different things to go over here. So essentially what I have here is the completed version so you can reference it. And I have the version that we're going to be building off of. So you can kind of see my process for building this thing out and getting it to work in VR. That's what I have in the scene here is the incomplete version. And if we expand it out, you can see I have this thing called plank bow. This is just the little model I made in Blender. Very, very pretty. We have an attach point, which as you can imagine, will be used to attach when we make this a grab interactable. We have a start and end point. This is going to be used for when we pull the string back. And then we have a notch. This is where we're going to spawn the arrow. And that's all we have so far. So kicking things off, let's start by making this a grab interactable. I'm just going to go to add component. I'm going to go XR grab interactable. For the rigid body, I'm gonna change it to is kinematic. For this tutorial, I'm just gonna have it float in the air when I drop it. I don't wanna to have to pick it up off the ground. Coming down to interaction layer mask, I'm gonna set this to interactable and interactable ignore ray. And I'm gonna change it off of default. So I only want this to interact with my XR, let's see, yes, direct interactors, which these bad boys are set to only interact with interactable and interactable ignore rays. So that's perfect there. Next, we need a collider. So if if we come here, press a plus here, I don't really have any good colliders on it. So, you know, I'm gonna just choose the bow model and that should, yeah. So you can see it's already pretty flat and I will edit this collider and shrink it right down to about where the handle is. There we are. And since this is for the XR grab interactable, we need to set this to is trigger. Go back to the bow and I am going to drag that right back there. And there we are. Let's see, movement type, instantaneous. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Boom, boom, boom. You know what? I think that's pretty good. And yeah, when I go to grab it, it's not really sitting correctly. And that's because I haven't set the attach point yet. So let's do that. Now, the attach point, this is where our hand is going to pick things up and it will orient it based on its rotation. So we want to make sure it's set to local and not global. And then you can see here, we have the X axis pointed this way, we have the Y pointed this way, and the Z pointed this way. So X axis you want pointed towards your palm, you want the Y pointed to the upward position, and then you want the Z to face forward where you want your object to face forward. And so if I come over here and then drag this attach point into the attach transform, and boot things up, you can see now it is attaching correctly. So there we go. Now we can grab the bow, but you know what? We can't do much else without something. Something's missing. Oh, right, the string. To make a string, I'm gonna use something called a line renderer. So to kick that off, I'm gonna create an empty object. I'm going to name it string, and then I am going to add line renderer. The first thing I want to do is I wanna make sure it's not using world space. I'm gonna get rid of that. I want it to be localized to this prefab. I don't want it to be lining things based off of the world environment. Next, I'm gonna get this thing a little bit thinner. I'm gonna change this width. I'm gonna click here, 0.004 is about how thin I want it. And you can see that looks pretty good there. There we go. Next, we want to get this in the right position. And to do that, we are going to use, well, the position. So if you don't see this, you just expand it out here. I'm going to need three different points. And then for positions, I'm gonna type them in really quick and explain them. And you know, we can't see this too well, so I'm gonna slap on the string material that I made that should come with this project. Let's see here. There it is. There we go, now you can see it. And let me explain these numbers. So essentially what we're doing is each one of these positions is where the line will start and end to the next point associated with it. So this is going from negative 0.85x to zero. And so if you see here, I could expand that out a little bit. And you can see, yeah, the more negative it goes, it's shooting out that way. 
Then we have the zero point, and a good way to see this one is actually changing the Z axis, because this is what we need to change when we're pulling back the bow. You can see that there. When we start to script this, this is what we're gonna be changing. But yeah, pretty simple, pretty quick way of getting a string together. Now we need to get scripting. To get the scripting going, first I am gonna come down here, and you know what? Let's add a box collider, because we're gonna need that. We're gonna turn this into a kind of grab interactable. I'm gonna set this to is trigger, and then I am gonna come here and I'm gonna add a new script. And for the script, I'm gonna call it pull interaction, and I've already made it. And if you just wanna download the source code for this project, you can do so on my Patreon. You'll find the source code there. And you can also get the cooler looking bow that I made in the thumbnail, which is also located on my Patreon. So if you wanna support me, I'd love it. But yeah, let's go over the script that I made. So as you can see here, I'm importing system. I'm also importing the XR Interaction Toolkit, and no surprise, we're also using the Unity engine. We are starting off by inheriting from the XR base interactable. So essentially, we're just going to be making our own custom grab interactable. Right here, I have a public static event action that is going to be using or passing in a float called pull action release. So essentially what this will be doing to other functions later on in this tutorial is going to be signaling, hey, we've released the pull action. And so those scripts will know to do something if they subscribe to this event. We also have references to our start and end transforms and also the notch game object so if we come back over here you can see we have references to this and this and that's just going to be telling us where we want the maximum and minimum to be for our pull string and the notch is here this is where we're going to eventually be spawning arrows coming back to this script we are also going to be having a reference to the pull amount so this is how much we've pulled back on our string we have reference to the line renderer because we want to update what the line looks like when we're pulling back and then also a reference to the interactor so this is going to be whatever hand is grabbing onto the string since it could be left or right that might switch between and so we just need to find out when it's pulling which hand we have now you can see here i override the awake function so it's always good to call the base classes awake and or you know whatever function you are overriding just as good practice you don't know what the base class might need to call and so you just want to do it as a a kind of fail safe line renderer here we just get the reference there set pull interactor so this is actually going to be called on select entered and we'll have to come back and put this in manually ourselves in the editor but yes when on select enter it's going to pass in these arguments and it'll say oh we're just grabbing the interactor object and this is going to be the right or left hand reference another one that's going to be called and we'll have to hook it up in the editor this is going to be release so this is going to be on select exited so when we we let go of our grip and this will just go through and do everything we need to when it comes to releasing the string. So the pull action release, again, this is the action event that is going to be signaling to other scripts later on. So the arrow knows to launch the pull interactor. We're going to set to null since we have released and no longer have need of reference to it or we're no longer holding it. Pull amount's going to be set to zero because, well, we're no longer pulling on it. And then the notch transform is going to be set back to its original position. And I'll explain that in a moment. And then finally, we update the string, which obviously is just going to update the string. So as far as the notch goes, I'm actually going to be spawning the arrow on the notch in the next part of this tutorial. And I am going to be moving this notch backwards since it is going to be the parent of the arrow that is spawned. And so when we're pulling back, that's going to pull back the arrow. So this is just resetting that from us pulling it back with the string. And next up is we are are going to override the process interactable function from our XR base interactable. And essentially, this is just called from the XR interaction manager. And it's called when the interactable is being determined by the interaction manager that it's, well, being interacted with. And you can see here, we again call the base version of it. And then we come in here and we want to make sure that it's during the dynamic phase. And the reason we're checking for the dynamic phase is because that is the phase during the process interactable that you are supposed to be able to move or animate or modify anything going on with the interaction based on the controller movement. And so we check for that. And then I get a little paranoid here and I just make sure one more time that the string is actually selected. And then we come in here, we get the pull position based off of the pull interactor, which is going to be the right or left hand 
can, whichever one's grabbing the string. And then we calculate the pull amount, which I'll show that in a second, and we update the string. And this is gonna be called every single frame that the pull interaction or the string is currently being interacted with. Next, we calculate the pull. And how we do that is, well, a little bit of math that involves normalizing dot products. Uh, if you're not too used to this or haven't done this kind of math, I might do a separate series to understand it a little better myself. This took me a minute to get together. And essentially, just to do a quick summary, is we are taking where the current controller position is in relation to where our start and end position is, and then calculating how closely related they are. And the closer our pull position is to, let's say, the start position, it's going to come closer to zero or negative one, depending on where it is, because we can grab the bow with our controller, right, and push forward. And that would give us more of a negative number because it's going away from this vector of the start to end position. And then as we are closer to the end position, since we can grab the string and go up, down, left, right, but also pull it back or forward, the closer or even if it goes past that, as long as it's going in a similar direction, it'll get us closer to one. And so that's why we clamp it here is we want it to be between zero and one. And this is just a way to project where our current controller is relative to the start and end positions. So sorry for having to math you, but you know what? Sometimes you got to do math. And then finally, just to wrap up our math, we have update string. Coming in here, we get the line position. So this is where we want the Z axis to be. Remember, if I come over here to the string, we want to be moving this one at the one position, and we want it between the start and the end position. So I'm gonna come back into the script. Essentially, what I'm coming in here and doing is I'm finding a position between the start Z and the end Z, and that's gonna be based on the pull amount, and the pull amount is gonna be between zero and one. And then since I need a vector three here, we just times it by vector forward, which just gives zero, zero, one. So we're just taking out the Z position. If I come in here, you can see the notch transform. This is where I'm gonna be pulling the notch back with the bow. And so we're gonna keep the notches, the notches X and Y, and then we're taking the line position Z, and then also adding point two. It compensates for the negative point two that I have here. So that's all that's there for. And yeah, finally, we go to line renderer dot set position. We go to the one index and set the line position. And yeah, there we go. We do need to hook some things up back in the editor. So let's do that really quick. In the editor, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come down really quick. Let's see. I need to set this, make sure that is trigger. Yes, okay. Interaction layer mask. Now, if you're just using the default interaction layer mask, you don't have to do this. I like to use ones that I've added called interactable and interactable ignore ray. And then I need to make sure that I am setting the collider. Otherwise, I won't be able to grab it. And the collider is just going to be this box collider here. There we go. I then have some empty slots here, the start, end, and notch positions, which, well, I just need to drag those there. Start end and notch. And finally, I have to set up the interactable events, which you can do so here. If you don't see it, you just need to expand it. Come down here and we are looking for select entered, which we need to use when we are passing in and telling the string or the script what hand is being used. And then we also need select exited. This is how I'll know that is releasing the string. So we just drag these into here drop down, pull interaction, and we want the dyna dynamic one here, set pull interactor. And then for the uh, select entered or exited, sorry, uh, we need to release it. And there we are. So let's boot this up and see what we got. Then as you can see, I can grab the bow, I can pull the string, and we are well on our way to making this bow and arrow work. But speaking of which, we need to get working on the arrow. And I'm going to do that in part two. Hope to see you and join me there. And a major shout out to my first Patreon subscribers. You guys are helping me on my first steps into making this a full-time gig so I can make more VR tutorials for you and everyone. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.